calling Patricia Hodge fans. Her latest film, a short film called Rose Pandemic, has won several awards since its release in December and the film has recently been mentioned in Forbes, described as simply stunning. Well, before we meet Southampton filmmaker uh, Thomas Shawcroft, who's behind the film, let's take a little bit of a listen to a clip from it. I was quite surprised to get your message. I don't know why I was. It's very you. Eight years of silence, then asking to meet in a global pandemic. How have you been? Fine. The same, really. And, um, Eric? We broke up. You did? Oh, thank God. Well, Mother, as ever, it was a pleasure. You'll forgive me if I don't stay to enjoy the ensuing homophobia, but my exercise hours nearly up. Andrew! Andrew, you can't leave! Andrew! I, I made you a ham sandwich! Well, that was a scene between Patricia Hodge and Alastair Hall from the film Rose Pandemic. Let's talk to filmmaker Thomas Shawcroft from Southampton now, uh, who joins me on the programme. Thomas, afternoon. Tell me what your involvement was with the film then, Rose Pandemic. Hi, Lou. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, yeah, so it was pretty much um, from the conception of the idea. Um, so there was six kind of HODs that were joined together through um, BAFTA crew and also another initiative called MicroShorts. Um, so it was the beginning of the 1st of August, I think, we actually started the project. Um, and then we it was two months, the whole kind of uh, to come up with the idea and to shoot the film and then to have everything edited. Um, and the deadline for us was to enter it into Sundance um, 2020. Um, so, yeah, that was a, pretty much the whole process of it. So this was pr- a pretty short turnaround then from the conception to uh, to entering it and finishing oh, it. Tell me more about it. I Tell mean, me more about it because I know it's a, a short film. Just give us a, a synopsis of it. So for um, for everybody else, it's, it's basically set at the height of the uh, of lockdown, and um, it features um, Patricia Hodge as Rose and her dog Reg, who live in. Um, comfortable isolation in an affluent um, uh, affluent area of central London um, uh, in Pimlico. Um, and then she, um, it's almost like she's stuck in a, um, almost like a Groundhog Day state. Uh, I, I think a lot of people felt like that um, throughout the whole pandemic as well. Um, and then she has this chance encounter um, with this young drug dealer. Um, and it basically disrupt, disrupts her routine and almost like wakes her up out of this um and and kind of almost gives her time to reflect back and um also to think about reconnecting um with um like you know past feuds mm. um and with her son andrew and we had a bit Alice Hall. and we had a yeah a little clip of of that there that and now there's there's quite a lot of of rather explicit language uh, in the film um some from the the young boy in particular uh, it's, it always fascinates me why you decide to put that sort of language in a, in a film. What was the, the thought process behind that? I think um, it's there's only two or three, um, you know, um, kind of ex- explicit moments um, of language. And I think um, it kind of gives it a bit of realism to, mm. like, different parts of society and different parts of culture as well. Um, but I think also they are key points in terms of what those characters are feeling and are, you know, we're trying to emulate real, you know, the kind of real situations people have been going through um, uh, in terms of like domestic violence and, um, and, and then also like um, kind of children being stuck at home throughout these periods. Yeah, I suppose when they are used few and far between, it adds a, a bit more, as you said, realism, but a bit more drama and, and, and they're enforced more, aren't they, when when, they, when it's not used all the time, that kind of language. Um, using Patricia Hodge as, as one of the, the cast members, I know you've had a whole sort of host of other famous faces behind the film as well. It, it really must have given it some gravitas. I mean, it was just amazing to work with her um it was a it was a two-day shoot but also um you know she she actually um it was a, it was really lucky and, and lovely but basically um i was able to kind of drive her to and from set um mm. and you know the commute is like i don't know five, five miles or so uh, and she was actually helping me directing me through central london because she's obviously you know lived there the whole time and she's taking me on all these shortcuts and um 
And then we're also having like great conversations about previous films that she worked on. Um, she was talking about her days of working, like breaking from theater into TV. Mm. Uh, and then uh, she was also saying like, nowadays she, she really does see it um, quite difficult and like a difficult struggle for everybody, obviously, especially freelancers in film and TV mm. to stay working and stay within their jobs and, and get the kind of um, support and also direction that people need to kind of continue creating, making a career out of it, really. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it was really interesting. Um, she was definitely a really lovely woman to work with and um, definitely would work to, with, with her again. How has it how has it been for you over the last year then? Obviously you've had this project, but for someone who is very much within the, the creative industry, and I know that you've you've worked on the, the likes of Poldark and Downton Abbey and you've got a, a huge uh, list of credits uh, under under your belt, but it must have been quite tough for you in the last twelve months. Yeah, I definitely I have been lucky. Um I managed to find some work with Imperial College. Um and that kind of kept me going. And that was filming um, small mini dramas, almost like mini casualties um, for doctors. Um, so that kind of kept kept me going. We were working with a couple of actors with that. And not, same regulations, really. Everybody wearing masks the whole time and two meters away. But that was actually within, um, within uh, like, um, training hospitals. Right, okay. Um, so that kind of kept... But for other people as well and... For me, I was really questioning um, what we could do because for a period of time we weren't able to shoot and everything got shut down. So it's quite worrying for uh, everybody that thought they had work in um, March onwards last year Mm. um, then to get called saying it's cancelled. I know, it's all those twists and turns along the way. So so I have have some very um, difficult, uh, some friends that have been in very difficult situations. Um, But luckily it's slowly picking up now and um we're able to still film even though there is another lockdown um obviously safely um yeah and yeah that's that's kind of how we've kind of i think the more the more it goes on the more sort of you find ways of navigating around it don't you well congratulations i know you've you've won several awards for the film which was created on a a very small budget so you did brilliantly well uh, with it if people want to have a look at it and just a warning it does contain some some strong language uh, it's on vimeo isn't it so is it just a case of going onto that platform and, and searching for rose pandemic yeah, we we post it now also on on YouTube as well. But okay. um, essentially, if you just type in Rose Pandemic, um, either Rose Pandemic short film or it's it's it should be quite easy to find. Yeah. Um, it's got Patricia Hodge in as well, and it's ten minutes long. Um, yeah, I I was just gonna say thank you very much to the other uh, HDs as well, and obviously working with Daisy Lewis and um, Peter Darney who wrote the film, and Daisy who directed it. Um, that was in a really really great experience and um yeah sounds brilliant it sounds it sounds really really good thomas and congratulations on all the achievements doing that thomas shawcroft uh, southampton filmmaker who was director of photography on that film rose pandemic if you want to have a look at it